Democrats write an incredible report. <laughs> So, do we already introduce ourselves? Should we do it again for real? Who's going to start? Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Chan, and I'm uh, the lead artist. He this. drew that pa painting right there, right? <laughs> yes, I did, yes. Okay. I'm Larry Ahern, lead animator. You killed that bird. And I think that was a Leela scene. Oh, okay. She's the animal killer. <laughs> I like the mustache tree. Isn't that a lot of shot, Peter? I'm Tim Schaefer, co-project leader of this uh, lovely game. And I am Dave Grossman, other project leader and designer and writer, along with Tim, of this lovely game. That should have been our titles, Co and Other. Co and Other, yeah. yeah. Clint Bajakian, one of the composers. Peter McConnell, one of the composers. Nonsense. Nice. It makes me feel great. The game has begun, you guys. Okay, so we saw the lovely, what was the name of that classical music that plays during the opening Ros voice? Rossini, uh, Will and Tell Overture. It's the quiet part of the William Tell Overture. There's two classical pieces that mean mourning in cartoons. Yes, there's that one, and then there's... And the other one is... That's from... Where is that from? I don't remember. It might be Pierre Gint or something like that. That's a good guess. It's not another place in the Rossini, is it? No, no, I think it's Pierre Gint. I think, I think... But for that opening scene with the music, we actually got the score and, and, yeah. and sequenced the, the ink into the uh, MIDI sequencer. Mm -hmm. That was one of the big panning sequences, like wide pieces of art for the game. Oh, the room shot? It was a double room? Mm -hmm. And I noticed there's a poster with an L from Laverne and Shirley on that poster back there. <laughs> Here's one of our giant animation scenes. How did you lip sync back then? Because we didn't have any like tool. Nowadays we use a tool for lip syncing. Do you just by hand? I think we little, just like, timed it out like the old fashioned timing sheet. Now that was for the cinematics, but for in game, wasn't it Eric Wilmunder? I thought it just blah, blah, blah chat. I think the in game was just on off with audio on off. Yeah, there's, there's no actual lip syncing for yeah. the, the majority of the game. So it's which just is funny since I have gotten many compliments on the lip syncing for this game over <laughs> huh. the years. Because, you know, it loops around and every percentage of the time it's on, right? Well, because I remember. Eric. Yeah, I think Eric designed a, a, some kind of an algorithm for making the the lips move to the, the like the level of volume. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah, if there of the waveform. Of the waveform. Wave it stops yeah. moving the lips. Yeah. That's true. Now, these uh, credits were done by Kyle Balda. That's you right. You entirely on his internship? Yep. So, wait, uh, did we not pay for these he, credits? Uh, or did he we pay for them? Time. He got paid, right? I think so, yeah. He took time. This is Peter, the other Peter. Um, we took time uh, out of CalArts. He came and uh, spent some time with us, and we gave him this intro as an internship, and he did a, a fabulous job. Seems like a funny thing to do, like, uh, hey, you're an intern. You've never done this before. Do you want to do the entire animated <laughs> intro? The most. But I remember <laughs> when uh, he did, you know, when he finished something, he shared it with us. We were all blown away by it. Yeah. It was awesome. The most iconic <laughs> signature piece. Can you yeah. <laughs> hurry and finish that before you go back you to school? You want to set the entire right. <laughs> tone for the look of our game. and It was excellent. It was awesome. I would, I would later learn that that was the perfect, this was the perfect piece to have Kyle work on uh, because he was colorblind, as it turns out. I didn't I'd, know that. I, I saw him know. working on something else and he had other people picking his colors for him. Oh, interesting. There was another 3D artist we had there in B building that was colorblind too, and it was one of those things where People are just kind of, have you noticed everything he does? The reds don't make sense or whatever. I couldn't remember what it was. Oh, the cow. I always get really happy watching these credits. I like the stretchy cow neck. That cow should have showed up again later somewhere. Yeah. <sighs> Missed opportunity. What if the cow had come on their journey with them? Everything would have been so different. Well, here's you know? the story explanation right now for why the cow doesn't come. Because he's just tired. Make like I've been to the, the mansion before. Now this is the first fight I had with Peter McConnell. Do you remember this, Peter? Yes, I, I was gonna. I, you I were was gonna mention that. If you were gonna remember it. Because the opening cutscene was too long, and we and we always had a problem with too long opening cutscenes, and so we were like, let's split it in half and put an interactive sequence. So there's an interactive sequence that's about to start. But I seem to remember it was the wrong time of day for you because it's nighttime outside. It started in the daytime with the mutation scene, then it became nighttime. Right. But 
Then what happened? To, then it turned into daytime at the end. That's what bothered you because the music couldn't make that transition in your mind. Yeah, I, I, well, I think mostly I was I was crabby because because you know we had to the, 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 the cutscene. And the interactivity required a bunch of programming in iMuse. And I'd finished it one way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then you changed it to another. And so I think I came up with some sort of artistic argument that <laughs> had, had to do with daylight like that. And, and, uh, but but that's an important thing to learn, running a project to not change the f after someone spent hours and hours making something. Well, it was also an important to thing to learn that. not to step way out of your bailiwick and tell the, the guy who's writing the scene how to write the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there are bailiwicks all over the place in this game. <laughs> hoagies, hoagies got that, hoagies got that part of the, hoagies got that part of the house. Hoagies got that, ho, ho, hoagies got that part of the house. Hoagies got that part of the house. Hoagies got that part of the house. I'd rather not. Hoagie's got that part of the house. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I'm not leaving this motel until I find those tentacles. It's stuck to the floor. I can't touch it, it's spiny. That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. I don't think I can do that. Laverne's covering that territory. It's permanently attached to the countertop. I think you have to push it. I left my little black book at home. I left my little black book at home. It won't go any further.
I don't know the combination. Boy, the Edisons are a spectacularly ugly family. I don't want to carry those people around in my wallet. Fred has them neatly arranged on the desk. Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. It doesn't seem to open. I'd rather not. Wow, it's from my favorite movie. I'd best not mess with it. Hope no one's watching. I look so goofy on video. There's probably nothing interesting in it. That kind is too bulky to carry around all day. It's signed, here's your EPA grant. Keep up the good work. Hi from Mommy, Ronnie83. I'd rather not mess with it. It might be booby-trapped. I'd rather not. It looks broken, but there's something in the coin return. Close gum? It's not in a wrapper. It's stuck to the floor. Help wanted. Lab assistant. Hard-working moronic drone needed to assist... I'd rather not. It's from George's Hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. Laverne's covering that territory. Aha! A secret passage. This. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? 
Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogon! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive! Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not! This is the first time I've ever tried it on people! Well, I'll be! And then there's the porta potties uh, vessel. Tronajons. Yep. Tronajons. Tronajons. This, by the way, is an amazing full screen animation before it was possible to do full screen. Yeah. And not actually animated. That's all. The background's all color cycling. It's all color cycling. <laughs> A lost art in the world of. Uh, I forgot about graphics. that. Now yeah. that computers work like they should, you don't have to do that stuff anymore. You know, if you look at Mark Ferrari's website, not that Mark Ferrari worked on this game, but he was the master of color cycling. And he has a whole website where he's done it in a more high-end way. Like, like with high, higher res color cycling, he, get, he just kept perfecting that to higher and higher resolutions. Yeah, that stuff was crazy. He was into it, and then I think Bill Eakin was the one that inherited the mantle from him when he left. All the lava in Indy 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, color cycling. Wow. Awesome. Hope yeah, so that was like two, three frame animations. <laughs> a little surf music for Hoagie. We always yeah. had a place for surf music in our games. That, the totally. bone wagon theme. Yep. That's right. I think that was, I think that surf music was yours. That was mine. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did that last little sequence there. Yeah, you know, the, 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 uh, musically, this, I believe, was the last project that we all worked on to certainly the last original title that we all worked on together sort of equally as composers where there was no lead composer and we all pretty You're much right. panicked and freaked out together cheap mail order jewels what happened to hokey and laverne i knew i should have bought a real diamond are they alive my dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, Save world! Step three, get out of my house! Let's get cracking!
What? Why would I want to flush that down the toilet? I don't want to cause any more trouble. I don't want to cause any more trouble. No way! It can't do anything without a new diamond. I don't want to get locked out. I don't think it's much use without a diamond. There, it's off, but it's too late now. Warning, do not touch the Sludge-O-Matic 3000. I think it's designed to run with something, more like a small rodent. It looks like a generator driven by a treadmill. Yoo-hoo, Dr. Fred? It's pretty darn cold. This beautiful 4,000 carat diamond can be your... The number to call is 1-800-STAR-WARS. Don't miss this amazing once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. My grandma gave me one like this for my birthday. Ahem. Are you interested in particle physics? I'm trying to save the world from a nasty tentacle. You haven't seen any plans for a super battery around, have you? I wonder where Dr. Fred could have put them. Nice room you've got here. Where on earth do you buy furnishings this color? I had an uncle who snored as loud as you do. Once he inhaled a pillow. 
Well, thanks. You've been really helpful. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's eight four six four two seven three five three two seven. I'm sorry, the Credotron shows that account to be empty. Up too late? Try a fickle finger's fate. Stick in a dime and you'll have a good time. I can't move him an inch. I can't move him an inch. I can't pick it up. That guy is lying on it. No way! Ahem. Late night? I'm trying to save the world from a nasty tentacle. You haven't seen any plans for a super battery around, have you? Nah, didn't think so. Well, thanks. You've been really helpful. No good. I can't knock it over. I don't think I can do that. The time is not white. I don't think he's interested. Except for those beef squigglies, I got everything I want out of there. It's useless. No one will ever be interested in my design. So I'm ending my novelty inventing career right here in this tacky motel. How appropriate. I can't reach that from here. It doesn't seem to open. Hi, my name's Bernard. What's yours? Dwayne. Isn't that depressing? Maybe I can help cheer you up? Oh, I can hardly wait. Maybe some calisthenics would help. Last time I tried calisthenics, I ruptured my spleen. Ugh. Why don't you try whistling a happy tune? I invented a whistle that turned your lips green. Nobody liked it. Ugh. Let's discuss philosophy. Okay, here's my philosophy. Life is completely pointless, especially mine.
Would you say that existence constitutes purpose? Oh, who cares? Philosophers are all failures like me who couldn't make it in a real profession. You haven't seen any plans for a super battery around, have you? Super battery? <laughs> that sounds even worse than the things I come up with. Nice music they pipe in here, huh? It's from the Elevator Classics series. It seems like this one tune has been on all day. I've never been so depressed in my life. Gee, you look depressed. What clued you in, Brainiac? The gun was a good tip-off. I'm having a crisis here, a warehouse of anguish. I'm a novelty goods designer by trade. I've come up with some fabulous ideas. The exploding lollipop, itching powder gum, and reverse 3D glasses, to name a few. The problem is, no one likes my designs. I send them all over the world and no one responds. I just wish someone would say they liked one just once. Oh, woe is me. I like your design ideas. Well, I didn't mean you. Uh, never mind. I can't see it very well from here. When you pull the trigger, a humorous flag is propelled out of the barrel on a stick and unfurls. I can't reach that from here. It doesn't seem to open. What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's gonna go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? You haven't seen Dr. Fred's plans for a super battery around, have you? No, just these world domination plans of Purple's. Any of Fred's plans would probably be in his office or the lab. What do you suppose Purple's up to now? Well, he wants to take over the world, so I figure he's up to something devious. Designing a miniaturization ray? I wouldn't doubt it, but I was thinking more along the lines of politics. Wanna help me save the world? I'm afraid to leave the room. In fact, I don't think I can even move from this spot. Purple scares the daylights out of me. How does a tentacle sit in a beanbag chair? Oh, that part's easy. But getting back out of it is hard. Why the litter box? Have you got a cat? Don't ask. How's your new band doing? Green tea and the sushi platter? We're doing great! We've decided to really capitalize on our strongest quality as a band. Intoxicating three-part vocal harmony? Volume, man, volume! We have a chance to win a Grimy Award as the loudest new band. We're pulling out all the stops. Weren't you looking for a new guitarist a while back? Yes, but we decided to go with a guy who plays power tools instead. We can generate a lot more sound that way. Are you working on an album? Yeah, we're doing a CD called Rap on the Forehead. I've got a few tracks hooked up through the stereo if you want to hear them. Have you gotten any airplay? No, we're a little too experimental for most radio stations. But we have a huge following in the club scene. That's great. Yeah. Can you actually use that bowling ball? 
No, Purple brought that in here after he grew arms. He got really discouraged, though, because he doesn't have fingers. Well, see you later, Green. Yeah! Good luck in saving the world, B-Man! It looks too heavy for me to pick up. No, the stereo would fall. No, the stereo would fall. Wow, this is loud. He's my friend. It looks too heavy for me to pick up. I think it's fake. It doesn't seem to open. Hey, Ted. Talkative as ever, eh, Ted? Boy, I haven't seen you since I was here five years ago. You haven't changed a whole lot. Well, I'd best be on about saving the world. I guess not too many birds bathe in the evening. No way, he's too heavy. No way, he's too heavy. He could easily overpower me. Hi. Don't sneak up on me like that. What are you up to? Uh, I uh, locked my keys in the car. I don't see your keys in the car. Uh, actually, I lost them somewhere. If you're locked out, why break into the trunk? I uh, have a spare set of keys in there. Nice crowbar. Thanks. Don't even think about asking to use it. I need it. See you later. Yeah. Someone wrote, wash me in the dust. Some people think that washing one's vehicle will make it rain. Oh. Uh-huh. How about that? I think it's locked. It's not my car.
He looks like he's in a hurry. I think it's locked. Not with what's left of my fingernails. I hate that clown. You looking at me? Are you looking at me? Then who are you looking at, huh? I asked you a question. Okay, clown, that does it. I can't. Uzo's intimidating. Conditioning, I guess. What on earth am I going to do with a flagpole? Sounds like fun, but I've got work to do. Sounds like fun, but I've got work to do. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I can't, it's stuck. Hey boy, you missed the party. You and the clown were having a party? No, no, last night! At the Novelty Good Salesman's Convention! I tell you, we Novelty Good Salesmen know how to have a good time! Has anyone ever told you you look like Don Amici? That's strange, my wife says I look like King Charles the First. So, oh, want a cigar? Sure, we'll lay one of those Havana babies on me. Thought I was gonna blow your head off there, didn't you? Well, you were right! I'd rather not. Hi there. What can I do for you, kid? So where is everybody? The really big bash was last night. I guess they're all sleeping it off. So want another cigar? Okay, but only if you promise not to light it this time. Would I do a thing like that?
I told you it was a bad habit. I don't even want to touch that gunk. I don't even want to touch that gunk. Slippery little devil. I don't have that. Now just calm down for a second. I'd rather not. Off, boy, that's a precision made novelty device. Slippery little devil. It won't budge. I'd rather not. I don't have that. Slippery little devil. I can't. Uzo's intimidating. Hold still, will ya? Hold still, will ya? No use in doing that, it's empty. No use in doing that, it's empty. I don't even want to touch that gunk. No use in doing that, it's empty. I'd rather not. I don't think I can do that. It's already open. It's closed. Excuse me. What is it? I'm rather... Thank you, Bernard Bernoulli. Yes, that's right. I knew it! You broke into our mansion a few years ago to save your little friend. When did you come for this time? I'm a repairman. I've come to fix your VCR. There's nothing wrong with my VCR. You keep your paws off of it. I was just admiring your statue. Thank you. It's been in the Edison family since colonial times. One of Fred's ancestors carved it. How's Dr. Fred doing? Well, he's still upset about the family financial situation, seeing that it's his fault and all. But he seems a lot better now that he stopped sleepwalking. How did he wreck the family finances? 
Well, we should have made millions on the computer game they made about us. But the resident genius locked the contract in the safe in his office and forgot the combination. What's wrong with sleepwalking? Ordinarily nothing. But when Fred sleepwalks, he remembers the combination to the safe. I find him in the office, opening it, screaming like a cat in the oven, and slamming it again. Something about what's in there really scares him. Unfortunately, I was never able to catch the combination since he works it so fast. How did he manage to stop sleepwalking? He stopped sleeping. Fred drinks a lot of coffee. Me, I only drink decaf. You haven't seen any plans for a super battery around, have you? Super battery, huh? Fred might have something like that. Fred is the one who told me to find them. This is quite an array of gadgetry you have here. Yes, it's the best surveillance system in the state. Is that a Plexus 7000 VCR? It sure is. It's got a dual tape speed motor with cobalt casing. Don't touch it. Are those xenophobe crystal matrix monitors? They sure are. They're so clear you can see the fleas on the bedroom walls. Don't touch! Do you think I could uh, play with these a bit? Absolutely not! I'll let you get back to what you are doing. Come back any time, you big hunk! <laughs> It's Dr. Fred's office. Nothing going on in there. Something strange is going on in there. Don't even think about it. It looks awful heavy. It looks awful heavy. Don't even think about it. No, thank you, dear. No, thank you, dear. Aren't you Weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Bernoulli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank. Hmm, no, doesn't ring a bell, but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then that I'm blocking out. So you gave up the crazy military commando thing? I'm much better now. I don't have those... those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. Nice hamster. Does he do tricks? No, he just sits there. I used to have a really smart hamster, but... something... happened to him. That hamster really should get some exercise. Well, Dad puts him to work down in the basement sometimes. But then he starts sweating, and then he gets wet, and then he gets cold, and then he refuses to work. Your dad or the hamster? Are you making fun of me? No, I... I get upset when people make fun of me. I just meant... Oh, it makes me so mad. I just want to... relax. 
I want to relax. I'll be okay if I just focus on my stamp. Well, hope I didn't get you too excited. Bye. Peace be with you. Jeepers! Nah, 